Take off the handcuffs. Now, Gil Jr., your three partners, Blackie Dawson, Slim Layton, and Judge Hickam, you've been ordered by the court to get out of Mesquite County and stay out. Now, if you ever come back again, you'll be put away for a long time. You talk mighty big, don't you, Marshal? Just because you're packing around a tin badge, you think you can run things the way you want to. I don't make the laws, Gills. But as an officer appointed by the citizens of Mesquite, my job is to carry them out. How about our guns? Do we get them back? Sure, you'll get them back. Along with the slugs, if you ever show up in this county again. Now, all of you, get out of here. All right, we'll go. But one of these days, I'm coming back. And when I do, I'll even things up. I'm like the west winds blowing nice and free For I ain't got nothing and nothing worries me Folks think I'm lazy, never had a dime How can I work when I never find the time Holes in my pockets, broke as I can be For I ain't got nothing and nothing worries me I'm so tired, I just got to rest I'm kept busy doing nothing Cause that's what I do the best Oh, I got ambitions to be like that old guy Who slept 20 years while the world rolled by Works too much trouble and troubles misery So I ain't got nothing and nothing worries me <laughs> this fellow Calkins is everything but the undertaker. <laughs> oh, let's go inside and make him give us a meal. Just what I said. This is a private town and you're trespassing. It's a good thing you ain't armed. That'll cost you just twice as much. Now go on over there and sit down and take off your hats. I'm going to put you on trial. Go on. day for you fellas when you ever showed up in my town. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. Court is now in session. The Honorable Calvin K. Cockett's presiding. Prisoners stand up. Are you guilty or not guilty? I think this coot's loco. Ah, that'll just cost you $25 more for contempt. Hey, now, wait a minute, Judge. You're not running this according to Hoyle. Hoyle? Who ever heard of Hoyle? This is a court of law, and I happen to be the law. Who elected you? I did. For your information, I happen to own this town, lock, stock, and barrel. I bought it for back taxes five years ago and paid $269.36. Confederate money. You got cheated. Mm, not by a jugful. Along with the buildings, I own the town site, and it's just chucked full of gold mines. Someday somebody's gonna make a rich strike. The town will boom, and I'll be a millionaire. Well, this is absolutely outrageous, Gills. A mockery of justice. Let's hit this old glute over the head and find something to eat. An excellent idea, Slim. I'm hungry. Uh, just a minute, Judge. Judge? Uh, now, 
Are you a judge? Well, well he's the uh, best in the country. <laughs> judge uh, Corgans, I want you to meet my very famous friend, uh, Judge Hickam. Uh, how do you do, uh, uh, excuse me. Uh, how judge do you do? Hickam? Well, uh, maybe I have been a mite hasty. <clears throat> I reckon you have. When I return to the capital, I shall report you to my very good friend, the governor. The, 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 the governor? I, I, I didn't know, know you were so important. Uh, gee whiz, governor. Uh, case dismissed for lack of evidence. Court's adjourned. Not so fast, Hawkins. We ain't used to being treated this way. Uh, uh, it's all a mistake, I, I assure you. Besides being the sheriff and the judge, I'm also the mayor. And as such, I am apologizing and offering you the keys to the jail. I mean the city. Leave him alone, Blackie. I think we can do a little business with him. Well, that's mighty kind of you. Uh, maybe you gents would consider settling down here in El Dorado. I got some mighty good gold mine locations here for sale. Uh, or maybe a barbershop uh, or even a p p p p pool hall. We might even be interested in buying the whole town. Uh, well, I don't think I'd care to sell the town. When the rich gold strike comes, I'm going to be here to collect on my investment. Confidentially, I grub staked old Bonanza Smith. He's out working a claim right now. You can't tell. He might strike it rich any time. Well, now, Mayor, uh, we are not hard to deal with. I tell you what we'll do. We'll buy 51% of your town for what you paid for the whole bird. You mean for cash? Gold dust. Gold dust? Good. Say. You bought yourself something, Mr. Gills. Wait till I uh, find my scales around here, around here someplace. I'll weigh this out for you before you change your mind. Uh, don't go away. <laughs> hey, Gills, you're as crazy as he is. What do we want with this ghost town? I've got an idea, Blackie, that's really going to pay off. We'll take over this town and run it to suit ourselves. We'll be the law. Are you joking, Gills? Why, there's nothing here but coyotes and ghosts. It only takes people to make a town. Sure, but how are you going to bring people to a dead camp like this? Why don't you use your head, Blackie? This town boomed once, it can boom again. I don't get it. You will. We can pay off the mayor and have enough gold left to salt a half a dozen claims. And when we do, people will break their necks getting here. We'll start the biggest gold rush you ever saw. Well, why, why pay him off? We can make him sign for nothing. Why, he's a fixture here. We need him. We'll let him front the deal. Here we are. And I got the bill of sale all made out for you. Help! 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 We're rich. Help! Help, we're rich. Take a look at them nuggets. They can all match. Where'd you find them? Why, on our claim, the one you grub staked me for, the one I've been working. Woo! We're millionaires! Is that claim on the town site? Yeah, right out of town here on the road to... Uh, What's the matter? You sick or something? Yeah, I'm sick. I just sold 51% interest in the town to Gills here. You done what? Sold controlling interest in El Dorado to Gills here for $269.36. Oh, can't we call the deal off? Bonanza's my partner, and I didn't consult him. Not a chance. You just gave me a bill of sale to this town, and it belongs to us. Of course, you and Bonanza can collect your 49% profit, if there is any. Yeah, if there is any. Yeah, that's better than nothing. I'm still mayor, ain't I? Why, sure you're still mayor, and we are mighty proud to have a gent like you in office. Bonanza? We're all in business together now. Spread the news about this strike and we'll start the greatest gold rush in history. In a few weeks, this town will be humming with activity. Every store and saloon will be open and we'll be on the collecting end.
got a horse and saddle and a forty-four gun. I'm on the trail each morning to greet the prairie sun. I'm a highfalutin' shootin', scootin' son of a gun from Oshian way out in the west. The old little lady, the old little lady. The old little lady, the old little lady. There's a prairie maid who waits for me to come back to her side. I'm gonna leave today, I'm gonna head that way, so she can be my bride. I've got a horse and saddle and a 44 gun. I'm on the trail each morning to greet the prairie sun. I'm a highfalutin' shootin', scootin' son of a gun from old Cheyenne way out in We're really cleaning up. A few more months like this, and we'll be able to pull out of El Dorado with enough money to retire on and live on the fat of the land. Maybe we won't move after all, Blackie. I'm getting so I sort of like this town. Well, you may like this town, but the people in it don't like you, and they certainly aren't very friendly to the rest of us. That ain't the half of it. Some of the miners are talking about forming a vigilante committee and running us all out. Yes. It's getting so I'm afraid to hold court anymore. What the people talk about and what they do are two different things. We are the legal owners of this town, and how we run things and enforce the law is up to us. That isn't going to help any if they stretch our necks. I'm not worried. However, I think we'd better soft pedal our activities for the next few weeks. You see, my girl is coming in on the afternoon stage, and we are planning to get married right away. And I don't want her to get wise to what's going on. Well, I don't think that's a wise move. Anytime you mix a woman in with our kind of business, trouble follows. That's for me to decide. Ellen and I have been engaged for several years. And now that I've got a lot of money rolling in, I'm going to marry her. I'm going to find the mayor and have him brush up on his marrying etiquette. Come along, if you like. Folks, I'm the mayor of El Dorado. You shouldn't talk to me this way. If you don't do as we ask you to, Cal, we'll do more than talk. But I don't write the laws of this town. Why don't you talk to Gil's Brandon? You know talking to Brandon ain't going to do any good. You know Cal as well as we do that he's behind all this law-breaking and claim jumping that's going on around here. I'm surprised that you, Bonanza, turning against me like this. Why, we're, we're partners. Yes, but we ain't going to be for long unless you send a mesquite for Steve Rollins so we can run him for sheriff. And once he's elected, he'll clean out this town in no time. Oh, I don't know whether Steve would ever leave Mesquite to come to El Dorado. I've known him for years, and them folks think a heap a lot of him over in that county. We know he's an old friend of yours, Cal. And that's why we want you to write him a letter explaining things to him. And until he shows up, we're going to organize a vigilante committee to enforce law and order. I have got the letter all writ. Now you sign it. Oh. Uh... If Gil's Brandon ever hears what I've done, my life won't be worth a plug nickel. Now, them fellas don't need to know nothing about this till Steve gets here and we start campaigning for him. Come on, men, let's go. Howdy, Gil. Uh, hello, Gil's. Uh, how's business? Couldn't be better. Since you're a mayor, according to law, you have the right to marry folks who wants to get hitched. Gosh, I didn't know that. What are you fellas figuring on taking a fatal step? Yeah, uh, Gil's. This girl's coming in on the stage. Oh, what's her name? Ellen Randall. Well, you better go out there and meet her. There comes the stage. See you later, boys. Gil! Ellen! Uh, <laughs> I'm sure glad to see you. Oh, I'm glad to see you, too. It's been such a long time, Gil. It's been too long. Will you hear all the things I have to say? Come on, I have a little surprise for you.
How do you like having you home, Ellen? Oh, Gills, it's wonderful. There's not another house in town like it. I even sent to Laramie for the furniture. I wanted everything ready for us before we got married. You've certainly changed, Gills. You're more settled, tamed down. I'm a big man in this town, Ellen. I own it, and I run it. I promised if you'd come here, I'd live the kind of life you wanted me to. I mean that. After we're married, you are the boss. Excuse me for butting in, Gills, but I gotta talk to you. It's important. Will you excuse me, Ellie? Why, certainly. He just told me that Bonanza and some of the miners forced the mayor into sending a letter to Mesquite after Steve Rollins. They're gonna run him for sheriff of El Dorado. Steve Rollins? It'll be just too bad for us if he shows up. We gotta do something about it. I've got a score to settle with him, and I'm gonna pay him a little visit. Get my horse ready and the clothes that I wore when I first hit this bird. I want to make sure that he knows me. What about the wedding? That'll have to wait till I get back. Hurry. What is it, Steve? Bad news? You know, Jake, I don't think I'm needed around here anymore. Everything's pretty quiet. Think I'll resign. Are you loco? What do you want to throw down a good job for? Read this. Cal Calkin, he's the mayor over at El Dorado. He wants me to come over there and run for sheriff. So that's where Gills Brandon went to. Yeah. This time, I intend to run him out of the country for good. Maybe I'll have something to say about that, Marshal. Now turn around. Keep your hands up. Get to a doctor. I'm going after but I'm plenty sure we winged him. All right, we'll separate and search every trail. Thank <laughs> you. 
I'm not carrying any gold, so why the stick-up? I want to ask you a few questions, but you wouldn't stop. And I'm not Gil. You sure must be a shadow, then. Why, you're as much alike as his twin brother. I think you got something there, partner. I'm looking for Gills, and I thought that you being a Pony Express rider could tell me where I could locate him. Well, the last time I saw him was in Mesquite, about 300 miles south of here. But if you're not Gills, you better be careful when you ride into town, or Sheriff Rollins will take a pot shot at you. <laughs> Thanks for the information. Oh, that's all right. Gills. Buck. It's mighty good seeing you again, Buck. This is good to see you too, Gills. It's been a long time. Too long. Say, this is a pretty bad wound. I'm going to get you to a doctor. Oh, it's no use. One of Rollins' men got me. But I guess I had it coming. I've been wrong most of my life. We used to be funny kids. Remember? We fooled a lot of folks. I was always getting you into trouble. I don't think you like very much being twins. I liked it all right, Gills. It's just that we didn't see things the same way, that's all. Now, you're going to be all right, Buck. Maybe, maybe someday you'll help me make El Dorado a, a good town to live in. We'll do it your way. You, you will see to that, won't you, Buck? We'll... We'll... Gills. Up with them, Gills. You sure did a quick change act, but it won't work. I'm taking you back to Mesquite with me. I'm not Gills. Take a look inside. Say, what is this, anyhow? You look enough alike to be twin brothers. And that's just what we are. I'm Buck Brando. I've been looking for Gills for a long time. I'm Steve Rollins. I figured as much. I was in hopes I could catch up with Gills before anything like this happened. Well, it was bound to come sooner or later. But the trouble he started isn't over with yet. He left a pretty tough bunch of pals behind in El Dorado. 
I'm going to resign as Marshal of Mesquite and go over and help the mayor clean them out. That's what Gills asked me to do just before he died. Help make El Dorado a good place to live. Would you be interested in helping me? I'm willing to do anything I can to make amends for Gills' mistakes. Well, maybe this sounds like a loco idea, but it might be worth a try. Now, you're a dead ringer for Gills. What would you say about going into El Dorado and taking his place? No one knows about his death except you and me. It's a good idea, but I don't believe it'll work. There are too many ways his friends could trip me up. Well, I could give you most of the answers. Blackie Dawson, Slim Layton, Judge Higgum. They were your brother's best friends, and I know plenty about all three of them. I'm willing to take the chance, if you are. Good. We can make our plans later. Oh, and Mayor Calkin, he's a good friend of mine. When we hit town, he'll help us fill in the gaps. I tell you, I didn't have nothing to do with the idea of sending for Steve Rollins. Them miners made me sign that letter. Well, if anything happens to Gills, it's gonna be just too bad for you. Yeah, he's been gone for four days now, and we ain't heard a word from him. Start reaching, Rollins. Put up your guns and relax. Steve is working for us. Howdy, Slim. Have you been, Blackie? Cal, glad to see you again, Judge. I wish we could say the same. What do you mean the marshal's working for us? Just what I said. I got to thinking about the citizens of El Dorado wanting to run him for sheriff. So I figured if I bumped him off, they'd run somebody else, which would be just as bad for us. So I worked out a deal with the marshal. He's still going to run for sheriff, but he's taking his orders from me. You can't do that! It's illegal. It, uh, coercion. It's, uh, well, it, it, it just ain't right. I'm the mayor of this town. And you get out and keep your mouth shut. I ought to have something to say around here. Well, that's not a bad idea, Gills, but uh, what if he ain't elected? Oh, he'll be elected all right. We'll run slim here in opposition, and every honest citizen in the community will vote for Steve. An excellent plan, Gills. Excellent. Well, what do we pay the marshal for throwing in with us? $1,000 in advance, plus my campaign expenses. After I'm elected, we'll split everything equally. How come you're so willing to make a little side money all of a sudden? You ain't never had that kind of reputation before. Well, no one has ever offered me this kind of an opportunity before. Being a marshal at $150 a month, that's not what it's cracked up to be. From now on, if there's any loose money floating around, I intend to get my share. Now you're using your head. There's plenty of money in the safe, Gills. Why don't you pay them off? It's the profits. Why don't you take it out of one of the games? What are you doing? Getting a scotch in your old age? Well, that Fairbank's been paying off. I'll tap that. Say, uh, how about this Ellen Randall? You still figuring on marrying her now that you brought her out here? Ellen. Oh, yes, uh, Ellen. Maybe she'll have something to say about that. Well, if she hasn't, we have. While you were away, we took a vote on this wedding idea of yours, and we decided that there's no place in our setup for a woman. I'll agree with you there, Blackie. We can't afford any slip-ups. I'll see you the first thing in the morning and explain everything. Now, well, listen, Gil. We got a lot of jobs lined up for the morning, and we can't have any female interfering with our plans. We've got All to... right, all right. Have your way. I'll change clothes and see you tonight. All right, and we'll all go with you in case you uh, weaken if she pulls a sob act. You. I came back just as soon as I could. I want you to meet some of my friends. This is Blackie Dawson, Judge Hickam, 
Slim Layden, and I'm a new candidate for Sheriff Steve Rollins. How do you do? Won't you gentlemen please sit down? They're my business associates, and they wanted to meet you. You could have picked a better time, Gills, for visitors. After all, you and I haven't seen each other for two years until I arrived. We've scarcely had a dozen words. No offense. Come on, Gills, hurry it up. Say what you got to say. It's like this, Ellen. I'm in business with these gentlemen, and, well, they don't think that I should get married just yet. Well, not that I don't want to. You mean to stand there and tell me that you let your friends decide how you live your private life? And what difference can it make to them whether you're married or not? It does sound kind of like I want to get rid of you, but... Uh... It certainly does. But if that's the way you feel, I'm perfectly willing to break our engagement. <clears throat> that's using very good judgment, Miss Randall. After all, you haven't seen Gills Brandon in a long time. You almost have to get acquainted all over again. Learn to understand each other better. I understand him right now. And if you gentlemen will excuse me, I'll say good night. I hope this little discussion won't interfere with our being friends. Good night, Gil. And thank you for the lovely trip out here anyway. Well, I'm sorry, Miss Randall, if there's anything I can do. Thank you, Mr. Rollins. If I'm still here when you're elected sheriff, I'll cheer for you. I might even give you three cheers. Good night. I feel like a sneaking coyote. Ellen comes all the way out here expecting to be happy, and I have to be the one to treat her mean so she'll leave. Well, I reckon it couldn't be helped, Buck. From what you and Steve just told me, we got to keep her away from you. Otherwise, Black and his gang might get wise that you ain't guilt. Yes, but I don't like it. Steve, you got me into this. Now get me out of it. Well, uh, suppose I take Ellen off your hands. After all, she doesn't know anybody here in town, and I have a hunch that she and I could be right friendly. Say, that's a good idea. But don't forget and go too far. When this trouble is all over, I can go to her and tell her the truth. And then we can... Yeah, I know. Well, you don't have to draw me a picture. Don't worry, I'll play John Alden for you. Say, the best way to get her to fall for you is to use soft music. Who said anything about her falling for him? Oh, well, she's got to fall a little bit, uh, enough to make her forget you for a while. I'll get the musicians from the El Dorado. You can take them with you when you go calling. You know, strains of soft, romantic music wafting over the breeze while you're holding the beauteous damsel in your arms. <laughs> well, I think you got something there, Cal. I have a hunch I'm going to be beautifully double-crossed. Well, I wouldn't think of such a thing. Uh, not very much, I wouldn't. <laughs> Why, you...
my sweet little rose on the hill. That was lovely, Steve. Do all sheriffs sing like that? Oh, not all of them. I kind of got in the habit, though, when I was a kid. I had to ride night herd during the roundups. I don't doubt it. How long have you known Gales Brandon? Oh, uh, not too long. Why? I've only been in El Dorado a few days, but I've heard a lot of remarks about him. Steve, some of the townspeople say he used to be an outlaw. Oh, you don't want to believe all you hear. He's a power in this town. A lot of folks are bound to dislike him. Say, where'd you first meet him? Cheyenne. Oh, he always was a bit wild and reckless, but I felt sure he'd settle down if he had someone who... someone who cared for him. After he went away, he wrote me letters telling me how well he was doing. You don't believe he's bad, do you? Of course not. Say, don't you fret your pretty head about it. Just forget him for a couple of weeks and everything will be all right. I hope I'm not intruding. It didn't take you long to get acquainted, did it? Well, we were just talking about you, Gills. Yeah, so I noticed. I want to talk to you, Steve. That is, if your lady friend can spare you. Well, I, uh... I'll see you later, Alan. I thought you weren't going to carry this romance stuff too far. Well, can I help it if the girl wants to kiss me? Well, you better take it easy or I'll back out of this part of the deal. You're supposed to be in town right now making a campaign speech. Remember what you're doing in El Dorado. That's right, Buck. We both have a job to do before anything else. Did you find out what Black and the boys had lined up? I'm going to have a talk with them just as soon as I get back. And I'll tell you what happened. for you, Steve. Folks, I want you to meet Steve Rowley, the former marshal of Mesquite. Get it. Oh, it looks like Steve is going to do all right, Blackie. Yeah? Uh, you know, we're taking over the Esmeralda diggings today. It's a good claim, huh? A good claim? You ought to know. Belonged to Bonanza Smith and the mayor. You bought it along with 51% of the town. Oh, that's right. I'd forgotten it was called the Esmeralda. What's happened to you lately, Gills? You seem to be going around in a fog. Don't remember much of anything. Oh, I guess it's because I feel sorry for Ellen. You know, it was kind of a mean trick to have it come all the way out here and then turn her down. No, business is business. That's right, Blackie. But there's plenty of time to house Bonanza. We'd better wait until after the election. A little too late to do any waiting now, Gills. I started slimming a couple of the boys out to the Esmeralda about a half an hour ago. And if Bonanza objects to being moved off, well, they'll shut him up for good. If anything happens to him, it'll cause plenty of trouble. I don't like the way he's acting lately, Blackie. He's either gone soft-hearted all of a sudden, or he's going to let us down. Yeah, I've been thinking the same thing. If I'm elected, I'll do everything within my power to bring law and order to El Dorado. You're running for the wrong office. You ought to be out for the state senate. No, I don't think so. How's the campaign coming? Oh, fine, fine. Couldn't be better. Steve's a cinch to win. <laughs> oh, Buck, you're free to talk here. These men are members of the vigilantes. They all know about you. Yeah, the mayor and Steve explained the whole setup. And we're mighty grateful to you for risking your neck this way. We'll all be risking our necks before we're through with this. Steve, 
Slim and his gang are on the way out to jump the Esmeralda claim. Bonanza's out there. I don't want anything to happen to him. All of you get your horses. We have no time to lose. We'll check with you when we get back, Buck. Keep your eyes open. <laughs> Go ahead and laugh, God, don't you? I'm getting to be a millionaire now. I got to look the part. Bonanza, I think he's been hit. through a lot of things together. I am pretty tough. Yeah. They killed him. He never done nobody any harm. We was partners. The lens is the one that made the strike here. Caused El Dorito to boom again. Now he's gone. You probably know plenty about this, Gills. You and your men been jumping every claim around here that's any good. I own part of the claim. Why should I jump it? Maybe for the same reason you do a lot of other things. If my men had anything to do with this, they did it without my knowledge. I'm going to have a little talk with Blackie. Somebody must have double-crossed us. There was a band of masked men waiting near the claim. We were lucky to get away from them. Blackie, I told you I didn't want anything to happen to Bonanza. Oh, did he get hurt? Worse than that, he's dead. Accidents will happen. By the way, you were the only one outside the regular boys that knew about this job. You wouldn't happen to know who tipped off the vigilantes now, would you? Just what are you driving at? Just this. You've acted mighty strange since you come back from Mesquite with Rawlins, and I don't like it. In fact, I think you double-crossed us. I wouldn't go for that gun if I were you. Now, the next time you start shooting off your mouth, you better think twice. Judge, get busy on Slim's election campaign. 
We've got to make it look like we're trying to put him in office. This is Holland. Don't forget Holland. That's it. <laughs> Hi, Pete. Hey, where are you going, Pete? Going in there and vote for Holland. That's far. Don't forget, folks, if I'm elected, I'll run every member of the lawless element out of this town. That's right. Vote for Holland to bring law and order to El Hi, in there. Say, Doug, how's your wife and kid? Oh, you ain't got any kids, eh? Hey? <laughs> Here's some people. Hey, come on, boys. Get in here and vote. Go ahead, sir. There we are. Steve Rollins does a lot of talking. But if he was such a good sheriff, why did he leave Mesquite? Put me in office as sheriff, and I promise you I'll clean up El Dorado. Now, folks, this is what I propose to do. We want Rollins. Vote for Rollins. As a sheriff, he'd be cheap at half the price. He'll put chickens in each pot. He'll have every rustler shot. He has definitely not got any vice. So vote for Rollins. Stephen Rollins, for the best confiding sheriff of this town. Give a hip hip hooray for the hero of the day. If we put him up, he'll never let us down. I've never seen his equal in your life. He'll make old acquaintance new, and he'll kiss your babies too. And before that guy is through, he'll kiss your wife. So vote for Rollins, Stephen Rollins, for the best confiding sheriff of this town. Give a hip hip hooray for the hero of the day. If we put him up, he'll never let us down. Things are working out all right, Blackie. Steve is a cinch to be elected. Yeah. I hope you know what you're doing. Uh, don't worry, I do. Well, I'll see you boys later. I'm going out and round up a few more votes. Take a couple of the boys and follow him. I don't like what's going on. Good afternoon, Ellen. I've got to talk to you. Well, I was just leaving for town, but, well, come in. What is it that you have to say, Gills? First of all, Ellen, I'm not Gills. Well, I don't believe you. It's the truth. Gills, Brandon, was my twin brother. I heard he was in Wyoming, so I came here looking for him. Well, where is Gills? He died in my arms after a gun battle with Steve Rollins and a couple of deputies. Gills had a lot to answer for, Ellen. But he wasn't all bad. Just before he died, he asked me to help bring law and order to El Dorado, to make it a decent place to live. That's why I took his place. You were afraid I'd ask him questions you couldn't answer. I was afraid of tipping off Black and his gang until I felt sure that Steve would be elected. The votes are coming in now three to one in his favor, so I thought I could explain. Maybe the votes are coming in, but you'll never live to see them counted. Time up and stay here till I come back. I'm gonna tell Blackie what's happened. See if you can find a piece of rope.
just found out that the hombre we think is Gil's Brandon is his brother Buck. Him and Steve are working together to get the goods on us. Where is he now? At the Randall girl's house, under guard. I thought there was something phony about him. We'll get the rest of the boys and bust up this election. If we don't, we're through. Cleans up El Dorado.
Well, I guess the prisoners will be in good hands, Buck, until they're locked in jail at the county seat. <laughs> Fine honeymoon trip you're giving them, Steve. Making them take care of a bunch of cutthroats. Oh, we don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I say. You probably won't even know they're around. <laughs> Well, 